Let's see. Semen retention cause depression. Interesting. This statement is obviously wrong because there's so many things that cause depression that are way out of the remit of something below the belt. <laughs> but it does remind me of an old school Muhammad Ali quote, which I'll show you here. Like dodging ladies is the main thing. Muhammad? Especially when you're pretty like me. Twitter, the headquarters of medical misinformation. I have scoured the depths and come to you with the worst medical takes on Twitter for your viewing pleasure. So let's get right into it. Germs do not cause disease. Say that to anyone who's ever had gonorrhea. This argument is as old as germ theory itself, which was developed in 1861 by a gentleman named Louis Pasteur. He created this theory through experimentations around fermentation and basically then hypothesized that some of these microbes could be causing disease in humans. Now he had a fierce competitor called Antoine Béchamp, who uh, had basically come up with some controversial theories um, saying that actually germ theory is not correct and pathogens are only occupying diseased tissue that is maladapted because of the way the body has developed and that all of the body's functions and the way it grows is through something called microzymas from blood body fluids. Now there is over a century of scientific data that now supports germ theory. The list goes on, antibiotics that work, um, the fact that people can get malaria and become unwell. But there's a small group of alternative medicine practitioners who is still aligned to this Antoine Burchamp type mentality that germ theory doesn't exist. It tends to be the same types of people who are against vaccines and against antibiotics um, in general. Obviously, there's no argument for it anymore. It's been totally discredited, but the history is quite interesting. But if you meet any alternative medicine practitioner who is trying to spread this kind of scientific message that is incredibly dangerous and you need to not only stop seeing them but also report them to their specific body. Okay, our next one is that if you have Mars in your sign, your experience discomfort in your and then different parts of the body. What on earth is Mars in this sign? Let's find out. What is Mars sign? Okay, what does Mars sign mean? Ah, it's the position of Mars at the time of your birth. Okay, well, let's check this out then. Let's see, let's see what they've got. Um, <laughs> I do have a little bit of discomfort at the moment, so we, we'll see if it works. So my Mars sign is Aquarius, that means I should have discomfort in my calves. Wait, I I actually do have discomfort in my right calf <laughs> right now. <laughs> Wait, okay, it wasn't supposed to work. Okay, cut the video. No, no, okay, look, let's try this for my wife as well. Let's see what her mask sign is and if it works. She gets headaches all the time. <laughs> I'll be very surprised if it works, let's see. Okay, so her mask sign is Virgo, that means that she should have discomfort in her stomach. Um, she doesn't. <laughs> I uh, so, okay, okay, that's fine. See, 50% of the time doesn't mean that it works. So this has been discredited. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below if it works for you. Um, it, it's obviously total nonsense, just like most of astrology. But people still believe it. What can you do? Our next tweet is West Virginia officers saved by Narcan after perp through narcotics in their faces. Quick thinking of off-duty nurse saved two West Virginia police officers on Tuesday night. <laughs> so basically it was like a ninja smoke bomb disappearance with heroin <laughs> instead of smoke. 
<laughs> That's just not possible. Um, so first of all, snorting or inhaling heroin creates a really slow release. So even if you actually snorted it at a high concentration, it would be very difficult to overdose on the heroin. The second thing is that when it's in the cloud, um, you're not really going to be inhaling very much of it at all. So it wouldn't really be in enough quantity to even remotely cause you to get high, never mind to cause an overdose. So the fact that they were given Narcan probably didn't change anything. Narcan is an opioid antagonist, which means that if someone's poisoned by morphine or drugs similar to that, like heroin, oxycodone, then you can give this Narcan medication to try and reverse the effects uh, of the narcotic. It only lasts a very short amount of time, between half an hour to an hour, so you need to repeat the doses um, constantly because the half-life of the actual narcotic is usually a lot longer than that of the Narcan. Some of the signs of poisoning or overdose with morphine or morphine-like drugs are things like breathing very slowly, reduced conscious level, um, and basically drowsiness. So if you notice anyone with that, especially if they've had narcotics recently, then they definitely need to be seen as soon as possible. There must not be that many narcotics in West Virginia. Can you imagine if a Mexican newspaper actually published this article. You can just imagine the conversation, can't you? Uh, we are no longer chasing the cartel because they keep throwing the drugs at us every time we try to catch them. <laughs> Sorry, that was a terrible Mexican accent. Okay, let's see. Semen retention cause depression. Interesting. This statement is obviously wrong because there's so many things that cause depression that are way out of the remit of something below the belt, like genetic factors, environmental factors, um, you know, whether you've experienced trauma in the past. Uh, these are all huge reasons why people can become depressed and simply not ejaculating for a few weeks ain't even gonna touch the top of the iceberg. There is actually some evidence that semen itself has antidepressive effects and there has been an old paper which was published, um, which was back in 2002, that was evaluating the depression symptoms in a group of college-aged female students and they found that those who didn't use condoms, whether they were in or not in a long-term relationship, had lower levels of depression than those who did or didn't experience sex at all. And they hypothesized that that was because of contact with semen, which had antidepressive effects. So the people who posted this basically are making the reverse argument that if the man holds on to his semen, then that will have antidepressant effects for him instead of giving the semen away and all of the good effects that come with that. <laughs> so I, think that there has also been some evidence um, surrounding the NoFap movement because this is a growing community of people, men specifically, who believe that not ejaculating um, helps to improve energy levels and things like that. There is some evidence that testosterone can peak after not ejaculating for about seven days or so, um, so that could contribute, but there is really very little scientific research around this topic and the papers that have been done have not been of sufficient study design to actually demonstrate a causative effect between not ejaculating and even energy levels, never mind depression. So you cannot make this claim at all. <laughs> but it does remind me of an old school Muhammad Ali quote, which I'll show you here. Like dodging ladies is the main thing. Muhammad? Especially when you're pretty like me. Okay, this one looks a little complex. So let's see, the red circled bit is Kentucky health officials have commanded us, commanded us <laughs> to warn you that consuming raw or undercooked eggs may increase your risk of foodborne illness. 
These are the same officials that shut down your church, your travel, and restricted small businesses like ours. And someone's replied, so now food safety is also bad? Why do you want Kentuckians to get sick? You're not a nice person. Vote Lehman for Kentucky in November. He doesn't want people to get ill. And then someone's replied, you won't get sick from eggs. Okay, <laughs> seems like Kentucky officials are the enemy. They have commanded us. First of all, why would Kentucky officials be talking about eggs? Because they only care about chicken. So you really need to take them seriously when they are. That means it's an important topic. And secondly, you won't get sick from eggs that are raw. What do they think Salmonella is? Like an Atlantic fishing festival? Unpasteurized raw eggs can give you food poisoning, which can make you very unwell and can even be fatal in some cases, particularly those at the extreme of age, such as the very young or the elderly. So cook your eggs, people. Don't listen to lemon deep fried over here on Twitter. First spinal adjustment and loved it. What? Why? Babies' backs are mainly made of soft cartilage. Their bones are not fully formed and calcified like they are in adults. And a baby of that age would not have had sufficient load on their spine because they usually stay in the prone position, which doesn't load their spine enough. So I don't know what they're realigning here. In actual fact, even in adults, many of these subluxations that some chiropractors are good, the more modern ones, some chiropractors say that there can be subluxation in the joints and then they need to be adjusted and that can lead to cures of colic and things like that. There have been no scientific articles that prove any of those claims. And so this adjustment in the baby is nothing more than a little massage possibly. Hopefully they are not you know, being aggressive at all. It doesn't look like they are here, but it will do nothing. The fact that he's doing it as an old child is okay, but if people go to him with their babies and pay him money to actually perform these treatments, thinking that they're gonna help their baby when they have an actual cause that needs medical attention, then that steps over the line for me and becomes dangerous and it's simply cavalier. So do not take your baby to see a chiropractor. Depression is a choice. Depression is a choice. The first choice to shut down after a traumatic event and then continuous choices to keep shutting down. So one sees very clearly that depression is a choice and not a disease. If one can choose to feel nothing, one can choose to feel something. I can't even begin black jaguar of freedom to describe how wrong you are on all of those points. Depression is not a choice. Is physical illness a choice? Why would mental illness be a choice then in that case? Who would choose to be unhappy and sap the joy out of most of their day and to choose to have a lack of energy? Sometimes prefer to choose not to be alive over living with depression. It's clear that you haven't met anyone with depression and I would invite you to spend a day in one of my clinics and your opinion would be very different. Many of my patients suffer from depression and ha are seeking help actively to try and conquer it. And it requires a lot of intensive treatment, including psychotherapy, so counseling, as well as sometimes medical treatment for short periods of time, or sometimes even long periods of time if they need it. And even after that, they can still struggle to come out of depression and will relapse back. I can guarantee you nobody chooses to feel like that. And it's simply a lack of empathy to believe anything that Black Jaguar of Freedom has said. And this is a consequence of hustle culture and a lack of understanding as well as mental health stigma which we would like to dispel all of them on this channel so that's why it's really important that you share this video and watch till the end with your friends so that other people can get 
this message. Intersex people don't exist, is what they're saying. This is simply wrong, and you may think that I'm talking about trans, but I'm not. Trans is about a lack of identification with a specific gender category, per se, or identifying with a different gender than you were assigned at birth. Whereas intersex is where you don't fit into a sexual category. There are lots of different types of intersex people and you're usually born intersex due to a genetic condition. The most common of which is something called congenital adrenal hypertrophy, where basically the glands who sit, that sit on top of your kidney, the ones that provide the adrenaline to your body, um, are actually overgrown. And in women, when those glands are overgrown, they can secrete too many androgens, which is a male hormone, and can give them male characteristics, even though they are genetically female. There are other conditions, one specifically of note, where someone has the genetic makeup of a male, but they look like a female. Most recently, there's been a model who um, has come out with this condition, I believe her name is Carrie Hill, um, who essentially looks quite beautiful because they are, she's totally insensitive to uh, testosterone, even though she's a genetically a male, she cannot bear children, um, unfortunately. And sometimes they do need operations uh, to be able to make certain parts of their body more normal, particularly the genitalia it can be ambiguous. So it's very interesting that these people can exist. There are other people as well, like something called Klein filters, where you don't just have two sex hormones, where you're XX or XY, you actually have three and you are XXY due to a genetic mutation. And that can lead again for you to um, have signs of both sexes at the same time. These people are usually quite tall um, and can look male, even though they have more female type genitalia. It's a very interesting condition. And that is basically all of our Twitter bad medical takes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then check out some of my other content right here and let me know in the comment section which one triggered you the most. I have to say, I'm feeling a little bit angry. I need to meditate after this video. So let me know, I'd love to hear from you. It's therapeutic to go deal with and channel the anger together. So stay healthy, stay happy, stay calm, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.